One minute, one minute. All right. Good evening, everyone. I call the City Council meeting Committee of the Whole uh, to order for September 16, 2020. At this time, we'll have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. And Alderman Dorman, if you would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Dorman. Brian, if you'd be kind enough to call the roll for tonight. Dunn. Here. Dorman. Here. McGinnis. Here. Lee. Here. Grip. Here. Condon. Here. Peacock. Here. Dickman. Here. Jokjin here and Ambrose here. Ten present, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. As, be, as we begin the meeting of the City Council Committee of the Whole, I would again welcome everyone in attendance and those who are viewing uh, on our computer or mobile devices. We respectfully welcome your comments and opinions, but please keep in mind as you talk to the council, you're sharing your thoughts with fellow Davenporters and viewers throughout the region. Uh, they are recorded and available also on the City of Davenport website. We're happy you're participating in the city government and ask that your participation please reflect the common desire we all share to make Davenport an even greater place for everyone. If you have a cell phone or electronic device, please put it on silent or turn it off just so it doesn't interfere with any of the discussions. If there's a particular issue on the agenda, uh, when it appears during the committee agenda, please, or any time public of business at the end, please step to the podium, uh, be recognized by the committee chair or myself, and speak to all of us as a body and not any individuals. Um, please be respectful, we'll be respectful you, with you. And um, when you speak on an agenda item of public or business, you'll have five minutes. Thank you very much. Ms. Spiegel, City Administrator, any update this evening? One quick thing uh, I would like to ask Assistant City Administrator Merritt to introduce one of our new employees. Good evening, Mallory Merritt, uh, CFO and HR Director. Uh, I would like to introduce Jolly. I know that we kind of informally introduced him yesterday, but wanted to take this opportunity to introduce him to our community and to the rest of our staff. Uh, he comes to us by way of the ICMA's Local Government Management Fellowship Program, uh, which provides us as an employer access to the 25 uh, best and brightest graduate students around the country uh, in MPA programs. So. We were very fortunate to have had access to his application. Uh, I've been very impressed and I'm excited for his contributions. Again, thank you again for, uh, for having me. My name is Jolly Omar, I'm from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, I attended the University of South Dakota for four years, got my undergrad in political science and then came back and got my master's degree in public administration. Uh, my goals here are to Again, learn as much as possible, try to get as much of a financial background, finance background. They've been helping me work with the fire and police department and also be able to work with as many departments as possible. So I've got numerous amount of opportunities and I'm thankful that the city of Davenport was able to give me and grant me this opportunity. So thank you. Welcome, thank you for thinking of Davenport. 
We have uh, next item is public hearings. So we have three of those tonight, uh, one in community development and two in public works. So I'll ask our community development chair, Alderman Grip, to please lead the public hearing. Alderman Grip. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Before I open the public hearing, I, uh, since this is a bit unique and that we'll have the public hearing and then it will not uh, reappear in the community development, uh, I'd like uh, Director Berger to come up and uh, kind of talk about uh, the CDBG dollars and uh, their relationship to the, the CARES Act. So, uh, Bruce Berger, Community and Economic Development. Um, so, just to clarify, the um, this public hearing is about three programs that actually you've seen a few weeks ago. Um, there was a, a deadline to get some information to the state. Um, one of the requirements of the state uh, is to also have a public hearing and follow your normal notification process. And so that's what this is. So we're administratively following up on that piece. Programs are still the same. We do have a little bit additional information that I can share. Um, the programs aren't quite ready to launch yet. So in case anybody is um, any constituents are asking or anybody um, wondering if they, we hope to have uh, more information in a couple of weeks, but it will be a, these three programs are basically a homeless hotel voucher assistance program that helps supplement the FEMA funding that is currently, we're, we're able to access, but we anticipate at some point that funding will run out. So um, this funding would supplement that. Um, there would be a tenant resiliency program, which is for rental assistance. Um, not dissimilar from our tenant-based rental assistance we offered back in the spring, summer, um, but it would be with a different pot of funds, so it would work a little bit differently. Um, and we do hope to be able to coordinate with a local agency to help administer that. And I should have mentioned with the homeless program, there will be three agencies as well, uh, Salvation Army, Humility Homes, and uh, Family Resources. Um, and then the third program that um, is before you for the hearing tonight is a mortgage assistance program. And that's one that we do anticipate maybe pausing on um, with the foreclosure uh, eviction, uh, I'm sorry, the foreclosure moratorium in place. Um, there, there hasn't been as much of a need for that from what the state of Iowa has seen. So we like to get the program through the state approval process. And then as that need becomes more great, perhaps in January, we may launch that program. So that's what the three are about that we're soliciting public input on tonight. Thank you, Bruce. Um, so with that summary, I will uh, open the public hearing on three financial assistance programs through the state COVID CDBG-CV application process to assist with the impact of the pandemic on Davenport residents. Is there anyone from the public who is here to comment on this public hearing? Seeing no one, I move to close the public hearing. Second. There's a motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the public hearing is closed, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Grip. The next two public hearings are under public works, and Alderman Dunn will lead those public hearings. Alderman Dunn, please. Thank you, Your Honor. We have two public hearings this evening for public works. I open the first public hearing on the plan specification form of contract and estimated cost for the Jersey Farms Neighborhood Park. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this public hearing? Please step forward and give us your name and word. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Tom Jacobson. I'm a resident of the 6th Ward, uh, representing the Jersey Farms Neighborhood Association, and obviously living in Jersey Farms as well. Um, the uh, consideration for the, the park we're talking about actually was part of a companion resolution for the resolution approving the casino back in uh, 5th, 5 November of 2014, and we certainly appreciate the consideration given and, and work uh, through our neighborhood on design and input and through uh, uh, staff, and particularly with Chad most recently on this group. So uh, a lot of excitement within the neighborhood about, about what this can mean for the group. Uh, it's kind of an anchor point for the neighborhood and, and more involvement about the neighborhood as a point, a social point of gathering again together again. So again, we appreciate your consideration and uh, we're looking forward to it. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Anyone else? Seeing none, I move to close the public hearing. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed, same sign. This public hearing is closed. I open the second public hearing on the plan specification, form a contract, 
an estimated cost for the main library renovation project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this public hearing? Seeing none, I move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. This public hearing is closed and back to you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Dunn. Uh, next is petitions and communications uh, from my colleagues up here. So I just have one. We've had our MOU uh, SRO Task Force third meeting and we've, we're through the first draft and uh, working on comments to go to final. So um, it's again, just keeping you updated. I had great discussion and uh, um, everybody is uh, participating and giving great feedback. So. Uh, with that, I see Alderwoman McGinnis. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, guess what I'm going to talk about tonight? Um, uh, yeah, we're winding down the census right now. Fingers crossed, maybe tomorrow, uh, the judge in California will say they have to keep going. That's my opinion. But in any case, um, so let's talk about where we are in Iowa. Um, we um, are uh, in a bit of a, a, a situation. Uh, Brian, do you have... Oh, it's updating. Okay. Well, I'll tap dance. Um, in any case, um, uh, we are uh, you know, continuing to make progress here in Davenport. Um, unfortunately, um, although we are sixth in the nation in terms of self-response, because, you know, we do that here in Iowa, we are last in enumeration, uh, follow-up enumeration, which means right now there's 10% of Iowans that have not been enumerated. So um, I've asked questions. Uh, I've watched it with alarm um, over the last a few weeks as the as this uh, self as the follow up enumeration came through because we didn't have that until the, mid the first week in August. So um, um, it's been slow. It's been very slow in Iowa. And we were at about 19 percent um, of our population, and we had so it doesn't you know we're 90 we're at 90. 90% of the population enumerated between self-response and this follow-up. So I've asked why. I'm told that it's because there's so many Iowans that uh, the unemployment rate is so low, they had a hard time hiring people. Um, but, you know, that doesn't quite get it all for me. So we're gonna, they do have people uh, coming in to Iowa to help uh, uh, do other events. So this is a slide that in, in terms of looking at the, um, where we were, in self-response on the left, which is really high, and where we are in terms of the percentage uh, that has done follow-up enumeration. Um, we, are, we, we will be holding a news conference on Friday at 11 a.m. to sort of get the word out. Uh, one more pitch to get people to, uh, uh, to please get out and, uh, and do the census. Um, it does end right now if things go as they're scheduled right now to end September 30th, so we are in the final days. So let's look at how we're doing in Davenport. I do have some bright news tonight. We've had two more census tracks uh, come in to, um, into green. Uh, census track um, 111 over on the west side, and I believe that is 4th Ward, um, uh, exceeded where it was in 2010. That's an important number. And then um, uh, Alderman Jobjan, I think you've done the whole thing over here. Uh, census track 129.02 came in at over uh, where it had been in 2010. So that's great news. We still have census tracts that are, you know, not there yet. Uh, we're still hopeful that the ones in red will turn to at least black, which means they're very close to where they were in 2010. We have four census tracts that are in the black right now, so they're close, but they're sitting like one point away from, um, or, uh, you know, like 0.2% away from going uh crossing that threshold so we'll have two more chances at this i will report again next week and i'm hoping that next week we will have at least four more census tracts that have crossed over and are starting to go up in the positive end um, so that's right now we have 15 out of our 34 census tracts that have overachieved where they were in 2010 and that's great news now i have these door hangers we have several thousand of them left we've distributed about 15,000. If you would take some and you would like to take some and hang them in your neighborhood, um, then please see me after the meeting. I've got a whole stack right here. They're all labeled and ready to go. They're easy to put on the door. And if you wanna do that, you wanna help your neighborhood, let me know. I've got them right here and they're uh, uh, specific to Davenport. So that's it, Your Honor, and thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman McGinnis. Alderman Peacock.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I greatly appreciate this opportunity. And Mary, and I, and I know I just came out of a meeting with you, but I want to tell you once again publicly, I truly appreciate what you do in regards to the census. And for people who really are not tracking the census of what's really going on, the leadership saw fit to shorten the census uh, response time. And what tends to happen is, once again, is you know people self-report. So you can go on a computer, you can self-report your numbers, and then you have a numerator come by. And if you're not annotated already, it'll come by and take the tally. But what most people don't understand is that that second part is where you, the mar usually the marginalized communities are getting tallied. And so at this point, um, certain people may or may not get counted in a census. And a census is so critical because that's where federal tax dollars come into the state and come to the city. And those tax dollars are greatly badly needed, particularly, you know, this is how we get our funding and get our services. So hopefully we can um, get a, a, a higher response rates when it comes to the U.S. Census. Secondly, I have my seventh ward meeting Tuesday, uh, the 29th of September. It's at 6.30 here in Council Chambers. Uh, once again, a great honor of uh, having Nevada Lemke, who she, she will discuss the Good Neighbors Project. I've heard this presentation many times. Outstanding presentation is something that we should do in every community. The Good Neighbors Project as well. There will be somebody from the Davenport Police Department to discuss public safety in the seventh ward. Um, this Friday, the 18th, from 6 to 8 p.m., the National Black Voter Registry Voters Day, once again, National Black Voters Day, Day of Action. We're trying to get as many people registered as possible to vote. That will be held in Centennial Park, uh, 315 South Marquette Street. Once again, this Friday, Centennial Park. If you're not registered to vote, come out and we'll help you get registered. Illinois and Iowa. Any questions, you can come see me afterwards. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Peacock. Alderman, uh, Alderwoman Dickman. Thank you, Your Honor. Just to uh, follow up on the census comments, uh, my professor was telling us last night that the uh, census form, uh, filling out the census form can bring up to $10,000 uh, per census filled out into your community. So I know that's not quite as exciting as getting a check that big, but it does mean that much to your community. So um, please either do it yourself if you haven't yet or tell your neighbors, tell your friends. It really does mean a lot. And 10,000 is a fun number to say. So there you go. Thank you, Alderman Woman Dick. All right. Seeing no one else, very good. We'll move on to our four areas for discussion. Uh, we have community development, public safety, public works, and finance. The first area to be discussed is community development. So Alderman Grip and Alderman Lee will uh, discuss this. Alderman Grip, please. Thank you, Your Honor. We have uh, one item on the community development agenda this evening. It is a resolution approving case F20-05 being the request of Townsend Engineering for a final plat of KC Kimberly Hills addition on 8.57 acres, being a replat of lot two of Westgate 13th edition, located north of the West 37th and North Birchwood Avenue intersection, plat to contain 33 single family lots. Is there anyone from the public who is here to comment on this item? Anyone from the council? Seeing no one, this item will move on. Alderwoman Lee, would you please set the agenda? I move that item one be placed on the consent agenda. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That concludes community development this evening, Your Honor. Good job with that agenda item. <laughs> Number, <laughs> Number two. Public safety, Alderman Ambrose and Alderman Jobson will lead the discussion. Alderman Ambrose, please. Thank you, Your Honor. The first item for discussion is a second consideration ordinance amending schedule 11, or is it six of chapter 10.96 entitled Speed Limits by adding Utica Ridge Road from Crow Creek Road to Veterans Memorial Parkway as a 35 miles an hour street. Anybody from the public? Council? The second item is uh, 
Motion approving the following noise variance requested at various events on the listed dates and times. Dane Mouton Renwick Mansion events, 901 Tremont Avenue, every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the remainder of 2020, no later than 10 p.m. Outdoor music band over 50 dBA. Anybody from the public? Council? The next item is uh, the motion approving beer and liquor license applicants. We don't go through those, but if you're in our city, you can find them on our social media platform. Alderman Jobson, please set the agenda. I make a motion we move all items to the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Ambrose. Um, the next area, moving right along, is public works. So Alderman Dunn and Alderman Dorman will discuss those, those items. Alderman Dunn, please. Thank you, Your Honor. We have 12 items this evening for public works. First item is the third consideration of the ordinance amending chapter 13.38.100 entitled construction site erosion and sediment control enforcement of the Denport Municipal Code to allow the city council to set the schedule of fines by resolution. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number two is the first consideration of an ordinance amending chapter 13.34. Point zero six zero entire title requirements for stormwater management plans, defining the documentation required prior to a concesco permit issuance. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. Alderwoman Lee. Thank you. I just have a question for Nicole. Could you tell us what a Cosico permit is, please? Nicole Gleason, Public Works. Um, this is the permit enabling um, the contractors to do the dirt work, essentially, um, and making sure that they're following the proper stormwater procedures when they're doing developments. And um, this is the follow-on item to what we had discussed from a previous cycle in regards to um, making sure that those long-term stormwater intentions of basin maintenance and things like that are filed ahead of the construction beginning. And there's also monitoring involved as well afterwards to make sure they actually implemented it and implemented correct. it correctly. Correct. It puts in the schedule and their maintenance and all that. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Any Thank other you. Questions? Thanks, Nicole. Anyone else? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number three is a resolution of acceptance for the construction of the FY20 sidewalk program completed by Kelly Construction of Davenport, Iowa. And is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number four is a resolution approving the plan, specification, form of contract, and estimated cost for the Jersey Farms Neighborhood Park. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Alderman Ambrose. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Do we have a conceptual drawing for the public on this? Chad Dyson, Parks Director. Uh, Brian's going to pull it up. It's in the packet, the layout plan. It's amazing. It's been six years since this was uh, addressed. Time really flies. <laughs> I mean, government moves real fast. So while he's pulling that up, I'll just go over basically the plan detail. Um, it's a 14 and a half acre parcel park development in the Jersey Farms neighborhood. Um, like Alderman Ambrose alluded, it's, it's been planned for quite a while. Um, the basic concept is an interior quarter mile trail um, along with native plantings. There'll be a 25 by roughly 32 shelter for gatherings and then a playground component uh, along with parking and then uh, berming and landscaping around to buffer uh, some of the adjacent neighbor homes. So um, the budget is, uh, the engineer estimate on this is uh, 445,000 and uh, the budget we have is about 500,000. So. Do you have con conceptual pictures of what this is gonna look like when it's completed? Yeah, we have some renderings that I can get. Yeah, one for next week. Why don't sure. you do that? Yep. Thanks. Absolutely. 
Thanks, Chad. Alderman Zorma. Chad, uh, you said last night this is the first brand new park we've done since when? How many years? Well, it's certainly the first ground up park development since I've been here. Um, I would say um, it's been quite some time, probably since Centennial Park was uh, developed and Veterans Park is currently being developed. That's probably the last true ground up park addition to our system. Yeah, I just, I, I thought that that was kind of amazing to show that we have a lot of parks here, but not necessarily um, a brand new one. And this is kind of a park uh, desert, you can call it. There's not too many in this quadrant of uh, the city, so I was glad to see that one's getting up here. Yeah, it's absolutely uh, critical to our system in that area of the community because uh, the sixth ward does not have as many uh, parks as some of the other parts of the community, and particularly the uh, northeast quadrant of the town. Thanks, Jay. Thank you, Alderman Norman. Alderman Lee. Thank you, Alderman Ambrose. Um, uh, listening to the um, the public here. Was this tied to the development of the casino? Was this a mitigation type thing for the casino or? That would be before Chad's time, my time, and pretty much everyone else's time. So I will defer that to the mayor. It was a negotiation with the neighbors. It, it, was, an, it was a wonderful negotiation. Uh, there was a big discussion as Mr. Jacobson in his neighborhood knows. Uh, there was, for people who remember, quite the negotiation where the casino would go much less the park. So after this site was selected and um, months of city council meetings and other neighborhood meetings, um, putting it where it was was best, but then it impacted a certain group of folks in certain neighborhoods. So it was a negotiation to help with that and find a good place for the casino. Uh, for people who remember, and there's a couple up here, that casino discussion was quite one of the biggest events in the city. So simple answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Anyone else? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number five is the resolution adopting <clears throat> the resolution of necessity covering the 2020 alley resurfacing program for the north-south alley between Pershing Avenue and Iowa Street from East Columbia Avenue to East Garfield. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number six is a resolution ordering the preparation of detailed plan specification, notice of hearing, notice to bidders, form a contract and publication of the notice to bidders and notice of hearing covering the 2020 alley resurfacing program from the north-south alley between Pershing Avenue and Iowa Street from East Columbia Avenue to East Garfield. Between Pershing Avenue, yeah. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing on this item, we'll move on. Item number seven is a resolution approving the FY20 Street Finance Report from July 1, 2019 to June 30, 2020 to be submitted to the Iowa Department of Transportation. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing on this item, we'll move on. Item number eight is a resolution approving the contract for the River Center South Complex Roof Replacement Project, the Economy Roofing and Insulating Company of Vet North Iowa in the amount of $641,500. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing on this item, we'll move on. Item number nine is a resolution approving the plan, specification, form of contract, and estimated cost for the main library renovation project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Alder Woman Lee. Library, Amy, do we have a um, rendering? I know you handed one right, out. Right. Could you tell us a little bit more about it? This is pretty exciting. So Amy Grosskopf, library director. Um, so we, ha we do have a few renderings. Before I talk about those a little bit, I just wanted to emphasize that so this is a project that the Friends of the Downport Public Library have really been instrumental on. They have raised $833,000 towards this project and are contributing almost $200,000 of funding from, um, from friends funds. So they've been really um, important to us in, in funding this. Um, the rendering you see here is the south side of the building. If you're familiar with our building on, on the first floor is where the children's area is now. It's not a very well-defined space and it's not very inviting for kids. 
Um, so if you, I don't know if you can see, but there's a, between the columns, there is going to be some storefront glass now that will um, hopefully prevent the little ones from getting away from their parents and out the front door, which happens on, <laughs> on with alarming frequency. Um, if you've got your back turned, it's, it's just um, really accessible. And then um, right on the left side of that photo, you see that um, kind of white, that's where the service desk is going to be. So the kids and parents are gonna to have to kind of walk right in front of the service desk, which will also give us another control point there, which will be really nice. Um, at the far back of that, um, way in back um, along that children's area is where the new teen area is going to be. So we'll um, have a much more defined teen space as well. Um, this is the north side of the, um, the first floor um, where our public computer space is now. Um, right now we really don't have a lot of space for people um, to sit and use the public computers. It's pretty crowded. If you need someone to assist you, it's difficult to do that um, or to have a staff member assist you. So um, we'll be redoing and expanding that space. And then again, further back, you see some more of that storefront glass and that will separate another section where we'll have tables and power and data available so we can do either technology training or have things like a 3D printer available um, and do some other kind of technology work. And, and also, um, so we can do classes there, but then space should be available for just for patrons to use that and use that technology. And um, this is a view that we'd be looking kind of from the front entrance, again, towards the children's space. It just gives you another idea of what the new service desk will look like. At both of the branches, we've combined both of our service points. We used to have a separate reference area and a separate just um, circulation area. Um, with the branches, we combine those service points. It gives us a lot of efficiencies. Um, and it doesn't confuse patrons because they can just ask at the desk. We don't have to figure out what desk to ask at. Um, and moving this, which is where the sorter is now, so if you've been in the main library lately, you go in and there's this big piece of equipment there, um, we'll move that back into um, a non-public space where it really belongs and reclaim that space for the service desk. And that view will allow staff to really see um, almost all of the public service area of the library to help them give better control over that. So those are the three renderings we have. The other changes that will be made um, will be adding a first floor meeting room and some individual study rooms. Thanks, mm -hmm. Thanks. Great yeah. project. Anyone else? Alderman Connor. I just wanted to add in, in Davenport, we have a lot of buildings downtown to be proud of. Um, more commonly, you think of buildings like the Davenport Bank Building, and then we have the Figgy, which is modern and glass. Uh, architecture from this period sometimes is not initially held in such high regard, but it's kind of fun to see it becoming um, popular again. And I personally really uh, enjoy the, the architecture of the library this time of year in particular because it looks beautiful at night. So it's nice to see that we're uh, upgrading the inside and that we can uh, all be proud of that building. And I will miss the sorter though. That's by far my favorite part is watching <laughs> that thing. <laughs> thank you, Alderman Condon. Your Honor. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to uh, say thanks to the friends and and all the work that our trustees do and the, the library folks. I mean, you can go to a lot of cities and you see one library. And the effort that the friends did, um, as we all know, a few years ago, uh, expanding and taking to the citizens and the overwhelming support that the citizens in a vote uh, did to get two more libraries here was pretty amazing. And the work that the friends do behind the scenes to get the quality amenities that we have and then the renovation and then the, you know, we're, we're putting some money into our river center, more money into our library. So you see the work that's being done on the streets, the commitment that this city council has uh, to continue to improve and the city administration to continue to execute uh, the improvements to our facilities because of, of the care and uh, uh, pride that we have in, in the things that we provide to the city. So uh, thank you, Amy, and, and to your trustees and to your board and, and especially to the friends that continue to do the work behind the scenes to elevate our systems and our libraries to the standard that uh, we expect and quite frankly lead the way as most things in Davenport do. Uh, with the, uh, the service that we provide. So thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor. Alderwoman Dickman. I was going to second Alderman Condon's comments that the sorter is actually kind of awesome. So can we get like a sorting cam or something? I think that would be oddly addictive to watch. 
Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number 10 is a motion accepting work completed under the 2020 Crack Seal Program, totaling $53,371.20 with Manats Incorporated. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number 11 is a motion approving the contract for the City Hall Security Upgrades Project to Precision Builders Incorporated in Bettendorf, Iowa, and the amount of $99,981. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number 12 is a motion approving a professional service contract for federal grant consultant work with Keller Partners and Company of Washington, D.C. in the amount of $81,100. Before I ask for comments, can staff give us an update on this? Claim here in Public Works. Uh, so this is a contract uh, that we've had for about two years now. This would be the third one. Um, so this agency helps identify particular uh, federal grant sources for us. And then once we find that they meet the priorities of the city, um, we put the applications in and then they help us through the legislative strategy of, of working um, those grants through the system. It's, it's been extremely helpful the past couple of years to have someone, particularly in Washington, D.C., who has contacts within particular departments, for instance, the Department of Justice or the DOT, um, basically our counterparts that we don't know to like kept pay just to send them. This is the information that the city of Davenport has to kind of put it in front of them rather than us being one piece of paper in a stack that's already um, massively tall. So um, this has been a really fruitful uh, contract that we've had. Perfect. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public? Council. Seeing none, this item will move on. And I, Alderman Dorman, would you set the agenda, please? I move to place all items on the consent agenda. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. The agenda is set and back to you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Dunn. So we have one more item to discuss, and that's finance. And Alderman Gordon and Alderman Peacock will discuss these. Alderman Gordon, please. I'm sorry, Alderman Condon. That's an old name. His big shoes to fill. You do just fine. <laughs> um, yeah, we have one item on finance today. Motion approving an engineering and architecture service contract to Shive Hattery of Moline, Illinois, in the amount of $60,700 for the Modern Woodman Park HVAC replacement project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Anyone from council? Seeing none, the item will move on. Below that, we have purchases of 10000 to 50000 We don't read each of those out loud, but they're listed here for your information. And uh, Alderman Peacock, would you please set our agenda? I move to place this one item on the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? That concludes finance. Thank, Thank you, Alderman Condon. Alderman Peacock, efficiency at its best again. So now we move to, are there any other ordinances, resolutions, and motions? There are not. Is there any public with business? If you have something, please come to the podium. State, please state your name and address or ward. If you're not from here, we'd love to know where you're from. You'll have five minutes. Is there any public? Going once, okay. Sure. Bill Handel, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, uh, fourth ward. What in here? Um, last time I was here, uh, I just, I, made mention of some thoughts that I had for a public uh, market and how that might be something that we might want to consider uh, to establish at some point in our downtown. And of course, uh, if you visited uh, Seattle, uh, the Pike Place Market that they have, it's quite a tourist attraction. You visit uh, DC, the Eastern Market behind the Capitol. Uh, everybody loves it. Um, they've got a farmer's market near it. Um, you visit Cincinnati, a, a German city just like we are. They had nine uh, public markets at one time. Now they have one, the Finley Market, but it's a rousing success and everyone wants to go there. So I uh, want to present a possibility uh, that I think uh, could very well work without a whole lot of expenditures. And uh, I want to draw your attention to the, the block uh, that's uh, bounded by 2nd Street River Drive, Ripley, and Harrison. And that the south half of the block is, of course, right now being used by the uh, transportation building. And uh, 
not the highest and best, best use for it, but it's a, it's a sound building. Uh, just not as, not, not a whole lot of money has been put to make it as attractive an area as it could be. Um, however, this space I think would be ideal to become our public market. It's off of Har uh, Harrison Street. Our visitors from out of town, it's one of the first things they'd see across from the Figgy. Uh, the view right now of the, of the river is outstanding if when you look at it. It's blocked only by the fairly small Union Station. Um, the, uh, the canopy right now that's, that's covering the buses area, if, if you were to essentially glass in most of that except for a strip around the perimeter where you could have tables, sorry, uh, just like we do at the, uh, at the freight house, uh, that would be a wonderful place to sit and, uh, and eat your meals. If you have uh, purchased your meals in here, if there's a, like say, a, a meat shop or a fish market or produce or um, bakery or whatever. Um, and then to supplement it also, um, I think uh, it'd be a good place to have our, uh, our food trucks uh, uh, because uh, it seems like a natural for them to be there where most people would be. Um, and then, um, Complementing this, I think, and I mentioned before about the farmers market. I think, I think it'd be a good thing to relocate the farmers market in the strip uh, just north of the tracks from uh, Harrison all the way to Pershing, uh, and I think that would be a, a much more pleasant place than they currently are. So I think both these things would work in conjunction. What happens at the north side of the block? Well, right now I'm showing a hotel. As a, just as an idea, I showed uh, showing the Bend Hotel in uh, East Moline, nine-story hotel, and the space in between the two would be an ideal motor court for the entrance to the hotel and the entrance to the public market. And so we'd be able to keep this building renovated. A new building of that size would be around $18 million, I think. So uh, obviously it would need some renovation, but we could uh, save a lot of money and to create a real attraction that uh, the tourists would like to see. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Hi, everyone. I'm Amanda Jo Sharp from the First Ward. Um, I actually don't have anything written down or anything. Just kind of wanted to say hi. I'm here again. I'm going to keep coming <laughs> and keep pressing issues that I think are important like anti, being anti-racist and working on our community to be better for everybody, which includes black and brown people. Um, I wanted to come speak again how I think that the Bet Davenport Police Department and the whole council should go through implicit racial bias training and that that should be an open conversation with who's doing the training. Um, it needs to be somebody credible, not just like a PowerPoint that people can sleep through. Um, and, I, and I do want to note that I think there should be kind of some kind of test to prove that you were paying attention and that you retain some of the information that's given to you. Um, because I, I think a lot of people can say, I'm not racist, I'm not racist, but you're doing racist things that are harmful without necessarily knowing so. And it's, we need to relearn, especially as white people, how to make our community better for everybody. Um, and that's all. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Motion to adjourn. Is there any other reports from city officials? No. There's a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Thank you for your attention. Door hangers for the census. I have.